This is Gareth Southgate, and this is the Three Lions Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Three Lions podcast. My name is Russell Osborne and this is an independent England football supporters podcast. One where I try and look at everything England related. Not just in this episode, there are plenty all previously recorded and you can find them all at your podcast provider or at threelionspodcast.com. This, I hope, is a uh, short and sweet episode one that I think I've done similar to last year. Or I've certainly done at some point since this podcast began. One where just as the transfer window shuts, I take a look at the England players who have moved clubs during the summer and make some sort of assumption as to whether it'll increase their chances or decrease their chances in an England shirt going forwards. One right at the very beginning of the transfer window, it was more talk, really. It didn't happen, and much like last year as well. Uh, Bayern Munich was supposed to have been sniffing around Harry Kane following the sale of Robert Lewandowski to Barcelona. Uh, But Kane strikes me as a player who is quite comfortable here, especially with his family. Uh, The only time I can see him possibly heading overseas or even to a new club, uh, is perhaps a move to the MLS in the latter days of his career. That's just me making an assumption. Uh, But for the present time, just like last season when he was linked with Manchester City, he stayed at Tottenham and already in the goals, recently scoring his 250th Tottenham Hotspur goal. This year, the English transfer window opened on the 10th of June and closed on the 1st of September. Now, this is between English clubs. I think, not 100% sure, uh, I think, though, there is a slight difference when overseas clubs are involved. But as we are now in September, I thought it's time to have a look at it all. Uh, These are no rumours. These are all signed, sealed and delivered. And it was the goalkeepers who were making all the moves to begin with. June the 8th, Fraser Forster moved from Southampton to Tottenham on a free transfer. He's 34 years old, six England caps to his name. He has in the past spent a fair amount of time at Celtic and Southampton. And I think it's fair to say he will sit on the bench as a backup keeper for Spurs. Another England cap? I would say unlikely, but a solid keeper regardless. June the 23rd, another keeper, Nick Pope. Unsurprisingly, he made the move away from relegated Burnley to Newcastle United for £10 million, already establishing himself there under Eddie Howe. Nick Pope, 30 years old, eight caps. However, Jordan Pickford, as we know, is Gareth Southgate's preference. And with Aaron Ramsdale in the frame too, I don't think he is going to be number one at any time soon for England, regardless of how well he does at Newcastle. We know how Gareth likes to stick with his favourites. And as old and as cliched as it sounds, Jordan Pickford very rarely lets England down. Nick Pope, I think, will be a squad player. He may make it to double figures in England caps, but he's going to have to have a consistently good time at Newcastle. Another goalkeeper, Dean Henderson. Now, he made the loan switch from Manchester United to Nottingham Forest, and he went with a bit of noise and some pretty strong words. Last year... He only made three appearances for United and none of those were in the Premier League. He's been at United since the age of 14, but throughout his career there, United have consistently loaned him out. 
loaned him to the likes of Stockport, Shrewsbury, Sheffield United, and now Nottingham Forest. And on moving to Forest, he had this to say about his parent club, about Manchester United. Uh, the conversation I had coming out of that Euro squad was you're coming back here to be the number one, uh, the number one goalkeeper. And um, I got COVID, come back. So I should have still been the number one. But then unfortunately, no one followed through with anything they told me. Um, it was frustrating as well because I turned so many good loans down last summer. Um, for that, for that reason, and they wouldn't let me go, so um, it was frustrating. And to sit there and waste 12 months is it's, it's criminal, really. At my age, I was fuming, um, but I worked hard off the pitch and um, on the training pitch to keep keep improving day in day out. So I'm really excited to be back here um, and looking forward to the season with Forest. As he said, there he was part of the Euro squad and has intentions of being a future England regular. He's only 25 but he only has one cap to his name at the moment. That was when he came on as a half-time substitute against the Republic of Ireland back in 2020. Will this move help his chances of future caps? <laughs> I don't, it's going to depend how he gets along, obviously. As long as he's getting regular game time at Forest at the city ground and performing well, shouldn't do him any harm at all. July the 2nd. Much like Nick Pope, another player looking to stay in the Premier League following Burnley's relegation, is James Tarkowski. He moved from Burnley to Everton for nothing on a free transfer. 29 years old, two caps. Now, we do have a bit of a centre-back crisis at the moment if you uh, look at John Stone's situation at Manchester City, if you look at... Harry Maguire at Manchester United. Is he likely to add to his two caps, James Tarkowski? I'm not sure. We know, as I've already said, Gareth likes to be loyal to the players he knows. Everton, if they have a season like they had last season, then I can't see him getting back into the England fold. If Everton have a season like they had last season, then he is going to be a very... Busy boy. July the 4th, Calvin Phillips moved from Leeds United to Manchester City for £50 million. It was the biggest early transfer of the season. Uh, but to start this hour, we have some huge breaking news. Manchester City, in the last 30 seconds, have announced the signing of Calvin Phillips from Leeds on a 6 year deal. The 26-year-old uh, joins from Leeds United, having made 234 appearances over the course of eight seasons. Of course, he is uh, Leeds-born. He's a Leeds boyhood fan uh, and joined the academy when he was just 14 years old. Still a huge fee, but perhaps in days gone by, it would have been even bigger. We are in the times that we are now. Times are a little different. Leeds fans obviously will be disappointed that one of their own has departed. He's still yet to score for England after 23 games, but he has got that wonderful on-pitch relationship with Declan Rice. And clearly, moving to City under Guardiola is only going to add to his skill set. He's an England player for the future, we know that. 13th of July, another big one, Raheem Sterling. He moved from Manchester City to Chelsea for £47.5 million. Uh, of course, formerly at Liverpool. He then transferred to City in 2015. And in doing so, he became the most expensive English player at the time at £44 million. He's one of the current England side's most experienced players. 77 caps. Only 19 goals since his 2012 debut. That's the one area that I always think Raheem can improve on. Uh, I can only see him continuing his career by winning trophies at Chelsea. Uh, of course, he grew up under the Wembley Arch, starting his youth career at QPR. So in a way, it's, it's almost like he's gone home. He looks after himself. He's a model professional and a role model at only 27 years old. 
And like many players do these days, he wrote a poignant tweet thanking mainly all those at City, but rounded it off by saying, I am thankful for all the ups and downs, as it's the downs that have at times tested my strength and resolve and enabled me to stand here in front of you as the best possible version of myself. I arrived in Manchester as a 20-year-old. Today, I leave as a man. 21st of July, Jesse Lingard. He left Manchester United on a free transfer. He has moved to Nottingham Forest. Of course, he had a loan spell at West Ham a while back where he flourished, undeniably. But he went back to United and his career stagnated. So from his perspective, he will now be looking to get back up and running. Will he get back in an England shirt? I'd say unlikely. He's 29 now. 32 caps to his name, six goals. He last played against Andorra away in the 5-0 win in October of 2021. August the 8th, interesting one this. Connor Cody has made a season-long loan switch to Everton. I have to confess, I wasn't aware of any major issues at Molyneux, which is why this one came as a little bit of a surprise. He'd spent about eight years there, 273 games, a scouser at heart though, so he's heading home. Um, And despite starting his career at Liverpool, where he actually made one Premier League appearance, he's crossed Stanley Park now. And since 2020, he has won 10 England caps. He's 29 years old. You may remember he scored his only goal against Wales, although it was in one of those Wembley behind closed door games and teaming up with Tukowski at Everton it'll be interesting now to see if they work well together and can rectify one of Everton's prominent issues from last season I think he's always going to be thought of by Gareth Southgate as a squad member but will he become a regular I don't think so 25th of August Deli Alley Biggest fall from grace in a long time, this one. Uh, Moved from Everton to Turkish side Besiktas in a season-long loan deal. 37 England caps, three goals, one of which was a wonder goal against France. Remember that one? He's still only 26 years old. Of course, he began his career at MK Dons, moved to Spurs in 2015, stayed there. Until 2021, making 181 appearances, scoring 51 times. He was having the time of his life, seemed to be the next best thing. Then, what with a change of managers there, things seemed to decline. As I say, to the point, he moved to Everton, where he only made a handful of appearances under Frank Lampard. Some off-the-field incidents haven't really helped his cause throughout his career. Um, So, I mean, a move to Turkey is an interesting one. And he's not the first to have done it. Whilst not English, Robin Van Persie moved from Manchester United to Fenerbahce. Harry Kuehl went from Liverpool to Galatasaray. One English player who was also at Tottenham and Everton and has got Turkish links is Aaron Lennon. He spent a year at Casia Spore. His England career had finished by the time he went there. And sadly, I think the same could be said for Ali. I doubt very much we'll see him wearing the Three Lions shirt again. 29th of August. Saw Ross Barkley leave Chelsea by mutual consent. He began his career with Everton, which is where he made the bulk of his 33 England caps from. He moved to Chelsea in 2018. He's had a a loan spell at Villa since. But my own personal opinion is that Chelsea, from Everton, perhaps wasn't the best move for him. Sort of a similar situation to Danny Drinkwater. Chelsea, doing incredibly well at the time. Throw a load of money at the best talent. And then slowly these players, who all had potential, begin to dwindle away. 
Barkley scored six goals in those 33 games and he did play in the Brazil 2014 World Cup, played in the Portugal Nations League finals in 2019, but his last appearance was the 6-0 away victory against Bulgaria in October 2019. He's 28 now and sadly, much like Deli Alley, I can't see him putting on an England shirt again. Now this one I like the sound of. Any England player wanting to try himself abroad gets my seal of approval. Not that I'm sure the players give two hoots about what I think. Uh, but Callum hudson Adoy has gone on a season-long loan from Chelsea to German side Bayer Leverkusen. Although I realise what I've just said about Chelsea loaning players out contradicts this, but he's only 21 years old. Three caps to his name so far, all of those back in 2019. I think this will do him the world of good. Apparently he nearly joined Dortmund last year, so he's had all these thoughts about moving abroad before. Hopefully a good season in the Bundesliga, obviously where Jude Bellingham is still playing, where Jadon Sancho has performed before him. Uh, it's going to stand him in good stead for future England caps. I wish him well on that one. Harry Winks, he's got a loan deal from Tottenham to Sampdoria. He's still only 26. He's got 10 caps, uh, one goal to his name, which was away to Kosovo. Former England players who have played over at Sampdoria, they include David Platt, Des Walker and Trevor Francis. So it's a good grounding place there. He last played in the 4-0 Nations League win over Iceland in 2020. But I think a good run of games over there, get his confidence back, he may make a future squad. And then the possibility there is, I don't know, making the subs bench. Not sure he's going to become a, a starter once again, but I think it's a possibility we may see Harry Winks again. And here's a blast from the past. One that with the, uh, the greatest of respect, I don't think will be troubling any of the current squad. And there is actually a reason for that. Stephen Corker. Who? I hear you say. What? Stephen Corker. One cap, one goal. Cast your mind back to 2012. Away to Sweden in a friendly. He puts us 2-1 up before Ibrahimovic scored three more, including that overhead kick. Gerard with the free kick. Stockholm, 20 years of age, Stephen Corker of Tottenham Hotspur scored against the English champions at the weekend and now marks his international debut with a goal. Anyway, he has moved from Fenerbahce in Turkey to, oh dear, uh, Fatih, Fatih Karagumaruk, Fatih Karagumaruk, also in Turkey. Apologies to anyone who... Uh, supports them however as i say he won't be getting a call from gareth anytime soon as he has since made eight appearances for sierra leone <laughs> oh well i'm just keeping you in the loop because there's bound to be someone out there thinking stephen corker he could do a job for us at center back and then finally deadline day first of september ainsley maitland niles the defensive right back has left arsenal once again, on loan. Uh, he's gone to Southampton. In total, he's won five caps, all in 2020. And that was it for England players moving. And I know it's all unrelated to our national team, but apparently the Premier League spent £1.9 billion during this transfer window, which is more than Spain's La Liga Germany's Bundesliga and Italy's Serie A combined. Personally, I think it's an obscene amount of money being thrown about when we, at the moment, are cautious about how much petrol we put in the car, when to turn the lights on and off, and whether to buy a new kettle or not. Uh, but as I say, I've tried to keep this an England podcast, and uh, we'll leave that, the amount of money that's been spent, uh, for someone else to discuss. As I'm sure you're aware, our under-19s won the European Championships during the summer and some of that team have parted ways with their former clubs and found new ones. 
Those include Aaron Ramsey. He has gone on loan from Aston Villa to Norwich. Uh, he's bound to get some experience there in the championship. Carney Chukwumeka. Remember him, he scored a couple of important goals in that tournament. Well, he has made a permanent move from Villa to Chelsea for £20 million, which seems an amazing fee for the 18-year-old. It's a high-prestige move, this one. Uh, he made 12 Premier League appearances for Villa last year. I'm concerned, though, that with Chelsea's track record, I'm just hoping he doesn't sit on the bench. I am hope he's given opportunities... Because if he continues in the form he's capable of, then he is certainly one for the future in a white England shirt. Of course, our Lionesses have had a wonderful summer. And just like their male counterparts, some of them have made moves too. Really interesting to see some of them actually heading away from the Women's Super League. Now, fees don't tend to be mentioned when the women move between clubs. I'm not 100% sure why, or even if there are fees paid. Uh, but anyway, uh, actually, uh, before we get on, whilst the men's transfer window is now shut, the women's remains open until Thursday the 8th of September. So I'm going to tell you what I already know. Let's start with Lucy Bronze. She's switched from Manchester City to Barcelona. Uh, I know it's not polite to mention a lady's age, but there's no real getting away from it when we're talking football. She's 30 years old, uh, formerly played abroad for Lyon in France. She has 96 England caps currently and 11 goals, including a couple during the summer, didn't she? Uh, she's been picked for the most recent Lionesses squad. Uh, she is likely to be a Lioness for a few more years. Jelly Flaherty has previously won 15 England caps since 2015. She's recently been playing for West Ham, although well, it's now switched to Liverpool. Uh, age 31, it's unlikely she'll be making the England team again, I think. Sandy McKeever was the goalkeeper who missed out on a place in Serena Wegman's final 23 for the Euros. Well, she has made the move from Everton to Manchester City. Aged 24, she's just made one Lioness's appearance. That was a substitute against Northern Ireland in 2021. With Mary Earps making the number one jersey her own, it's likely that McKeever will be just used as a fringe player. Uh, when the likes of Hannah Hampton and Ellie Roebuck are unavailable. Uh, but she has been included in the most recent Lionesses squad to face Austria and Luxembourg. So perhaps she will at some point add to that one cap. Nikita Paris, like Lucy Bronze, had a period of time in France for Lyon. Uh, she was also at Manchester City. She made 18 appearances, most recently for Arsenal, but has now joined Manchester United. She's aged 28, and with 67 caps and 15 goals, she's still got a lot more to give. I'm wondering, perhaps her time at Arsenal just wasn't right for her. Perhaps the fit just wasn't there. This is an interesting one. Georgia Stanway. She has made the switch from Manchester City to German side Bayern Munich. We all know what she achieved during the summer, especially with that extra time goal against Spain. Only 23, but already amassed 40 caps with 11 goals. It's going to be interesting to see how she adapts to German life. And I have to be honest, I'm not too aware of the women's league over there. So it'll be uh, interesting to see how she does. And Rachel Daly, one of the Lionesses' older players at 30 years in the past, she spent a lot of her career over in the States, most notably for the Houston Dash, where she played as a striker. Of course, during the Euros, she started every game as left back. She has since signed a three-year deal with Aston Villa. So it's going to be interesting to see where they play her. Uh, certainly versatile. But with 57 caps and eight goals, I think she'll be a regular lioness for the foreseeable future.
some sad news that you may already have heard. But as I always like to do, I always like to acknowledge it here on the podcast. Sunday, the 21st of August, saw the passing of David Armstrong. Born the 26th of December, Boxing Day, 1954. He began his career at Middlesbrough in 1971, where he would stay for 10 years making 359 appearances, scoring 59 times. And it was there that he actually holds the club record of 305 consecutive league games. Imagine that in a Premier League era. Wouldn't happen, would it? He then moved to Southampton, where he stayed until 1987. 222 games, and there he also scored. 59 goals. And he then had a short spell at Bournemouth before he retired. Distinguishable by his bald head later in his playing career, he also won three England caps. The first, back in May 1980, when England went on a tour down under, beating Australia 2-1. That was under Ron Greenwood. His next games were under Bobby Robson. A friendly at Wembley against West Germany that ended in a 2-1 defeat. And his last game, two years later, in 1984. A home nation's loss to Wales. On each occasion, he started the game, but was subbed off. David Spike Armstrong, as he was known as at Middlesbrough, passed away on the 21st of August, aged 67. Thoughts, as always, go to his family and friends. Thank you, as always, for listening. Always appreciated. I hope you found this one informative. We all want what's best for our England team. Hopefully, I didn't miss anyone out. Uh, If I have, please let me know. I do like to try and keep abreast of them all, though. On the podcast front, as we are now in September... Uh, I'll have a preview of our games against Italy and Germany coming up at some point. So looking forward to that trip to Milan. Uh, Come and say hi um, if you are going there. Uh, I will also have a review of the Lionesses games against Austria and Luxembourg. The preview for that one uh, is still available. There will be another in our World Cup Series 2. Where are we up to now? We've done 1990. Uh, recently with Mark Raven. That's a good one. Yeah, we didn't do 1994. 1998. We will do 98 at some point this month. France 98. I've got loads of ideas. Just got to make them happen for the podcast. Um, So stay subscribed and you shouldn't miss those. In the meantime, feel free to follow on social media, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Just search Three Lions Podcast. So until the next time, take care of yourselves. Cheers.